Welcome back to Cryptos R Us. I am George. We're all George. So, what happened exactly yesterday? And what's happening this week? We had the ETF. Why are we not pumping? Well, let me explain why Bitcoin does this every single cycle. Not just every single cycle. During the bull cycle. So, let's talk about what's going on with Bitcoin. And what's going on with DALS? There are a lot of good pickup opportunities right now. So let's do this. Welcome, 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 guys. Hopefully you're having a good Saturday. Bitcoin has dropped to 42.8, which looks and sounds horrible, especially since we topped out at 49,000 recently. But here's the thing to remember. Uh, we were just here a week ago. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, even though... We did not pump above 50,000. Bitcoin came down, took a little breather, but we are basically back to where we were a week ago. We have not reset to six months ago or a year ago or three years ago. No, this is actually just a really good time to be dollar cost averaging. It's, it's, <laughs> that's the best way to think about it. We're presented with more time to pick up on all the great Alts and Bitcoin, right? That's really it. So far, within this last week, we had two huge days of ETF trading, right? This, the first day was around $5 billion. The second day was about $3.1 billion. And this is just the beginning. This, this was just the first week. Again, only two days out of the week. But here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, based on what has happened in just two days alone. BlackRock now holds about half a billion in their ETF. Again, that's just two days alone. Remember BlackRock originally said they would go seed their ETF with $10 million? Okay, well that $10 million ballooned to half a billion. Now imagine as the cycle goes on and as more and more people come into Bitcoin and FOMO in, that is going to start blowing up like crazy and that's just one fund what about all the other funds that's adding remember i talked about coinbase having seven billion dollars worth of bitcoin coming out otc where is it going it's going to all these fund managers right they're slowly adding into their funds as more and more people buy in and here's the thing here's the thing 30 trillion dollars worth of money of wealth and wealth management, right? Could be coming into ETFs. It's not could, they will. I don't know about 30 trillion will all flow in right away, but within this cycle, we're going to see that. We're going to see massive amount of money. There's no doubt about it. I've been saying billions upon billions is gonna turn into trillions upon trillions, okay? As this cycle moves forward and people forget, we're only in the second week of 20. 24. <laughs> We're only in the second week of January of this year. We got a lot of room to grow. Remember what happened in 2023 between October and December. Those two months, Bitcoin doubled. So <laughs> we got a lot of room to grow this year. And we're starting off with a bang. And we're going to get more bang <laughs> later this year as more money flows in slowly and eventually that slowness that slow trickle will turn into a a floodgate being opened okay and we're talking about trillions that will be flowing in so i mean don't be disappointed what i'm trying to say is some of you guys may be discouraged some of you guys may say well it's a nothing burger etfs end up being nothing no they will they will end up being something huge Okay, wealth management, these guys from all the major wealth management companies and the biggest banks, you know, a lot of them could not buy physical Bitcoin, but now you can put, you can put that money into spot ETFs. The same thing with the retirement funds. A lot of people are looking at converting their retirement funds or not converting, but at least buying spot ETFs with them, right? It opens up so much, so, so much. Um, and right now, I don't know why, you still have like an asset manager, Vanguard, right? That has 7.7 7, 7 trillion. 
they're not allowing people to buy Bitcoin. Um, this is wrong. It says Bitcoin's future ETF. It's Bitcoin spot ETFs. They're not allowing people to buy spot ETFs, which again, I don't even know if that's legal. But here's the thing. Even though they may be saying one thing, but they're really doing another. Vanguard is one of the top shareholders of MicroStrategy, even though they're telling people, hey, Bitcoin is too volatile. You should not be buying it. But on the other hand, they own a large chunk of the company that holds 180,000 Bitcoins, right? So there's still some games being played. Still definitely some games being played by Wall Street. Even though spot ETFs are approved, there are still some, some companies that are still trying to fool you into thinking you should not be getting into Bitcoin. But behind the scenes, they are. Not only is Vanguard a big shareholder of MicroStrategy, but if you look at like Coinbase, you look at all these mining companies, they hold large portions of every single one. So uh, they're definitely playing games. They're telling you one thing, but doing another. Okay. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, you know, last week, people speculated. Uh, it wasn't last week. I think it was just yesterday. People were speculating that maybe Grayscale is behind the sell-off, right? Even though there's, uh, you know, there's, it's natural to have some profit taking, but a lot of people speculate that Grayscale may have been selling off because the insiders now want to cash out. Because a lot of insiders, the ones that put money into the trust, couldn't take it out before. Now they can. But according to Arkham, that's not the case. Only 41 million got sold from within their large bucket. They have like 650,000 Bitcoins or something like that. Only 41 million of it was sold off. So it wasn't the insiders cashing out. Again, it has nothing to do with it. But you know who is cashing out, which is kind of strange. And maybe not. It turned out the miners are selling. The miners sent about $1 billion of Bitcoin to the exchanges. $1 billion. Now, why do you think they, they're doing this? I could speculate. I think it's because they know the halving event is right around the corner, right? They know that after the halving event, in order for them to make the same amount of Bitcoin uh, from mining, they have to double their equipment. Think about it. That's the amazing thing about Bitcoin. <laughs> after the halving event, the inflation rate gets cut in half, which means if the miners, let's say, are making $10 million a day from their Bitcoin um from the bitcoins that they have found right that's going to be, be immediately cut to 5 million so they have to double their equipment to get back to 10 million so i think they're taking advantage right now because bitcoin you know hit all, nearly fifty thousand dollars. i think they're selling off right now because they need to to stay competitive they want to utilize that money to buy more miners after the having event they only have three more months to prepare the having event is coming in in April. So I think that's what's happening right now. And I think that's actually why we sold out. Not because Wall Street is driving things down. Not because Grayscale is selling off. It's simply because the miners are taking a little profit right now because they're trying to prepare for the having event. And I think it's really that simple. It's really that simple. Of course, there's a, probably a little sprinkle of profit sharing of taking here and there, right? But certainly no catastrophic dump. Again, like I said at the beginning of the show, we basically got reset for like a week. That's it. Like we didn't get reset back six months ago or something. Um, so, I mean, if you have a billion dollars worth of selling, that could definitely drive Bitcoin down a little bit. But here's the thing. A billion dollar worth of selling is nothing compared to the trillions of buying that'll be happening in short order. Okay. It's going to come within the next two years. And I think a lot of it is going to come this year. So whatever's happening right now, here's the main main point of today's stream. That this happens every single cycle. The main point is sometimes it looks scary. Like this chart. Nine years ago, when Bitcoin was climbing up and no one really understood Bitcoin and it was theoretical and no one really cared. But you could see how catastrophic that drop looked uh, from two hundred sixty five dollars all the way down below one hundred and ten. You know, 
for many, many, many people, they will look at that and they, they say, ah, this is not for me. I'm getting out, right? I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm out of here. But here's the thing. It happens every single cycle over and over and over and over and over and over again. It's actually less, less volatile. It's actually a lot more tame right now versus before. I've lived through the 2016 to 2017 cycle. Some of you guys have as well. 40, 35%, 40% drops, right? We haven't seen those days yet. Not saying we won't. If Bitcoin starts breaking above $100,000, maybe we'll start seeing some of those 40% drops. That would be crazy if you think about it. If we go to $100,000, we drop back down to $60,000. But hey, it could happen. In 2016, that's exactly what happened. Look at how many times those catastrophic drops happen. And we haven't really experienced that yet. We had some in during the bear market. Yeah, that's for sure. But now... Not so much, right? But it happens every single cycle. The market becomes too hot. Maybe there's too much leverage. There's profit taking for whatever reason. It happens every single cycle. But every single cycle, you have people that look at it. They can't stand the volatility or they can't, they don't understand. And they leave, they leave for good. And, and that's not what we want. We want people to come in, understand what Bitcoin is about understand as a long-term investment and understand there's volatility there's always going to be volatility right but those that stay in the market and continue to accumulate a hold they win they profit the most it's funny I, I i got sent this this morning by my team dave portnoy you guys know who dave is he had a rocky he's had a rocky relationship with bitcoin and crypto he was in safe moon you know riding that up and rode that all the way down to zero uh and same thing with bitcoin so he explains how he bought a million dollars of the bitcoin at at 30 something thousand right and he got he got fudded out basically and he sold everything at twenty thousand. so he lost like over 50 percent of his Bitcoin, but he never decided to buy back in. He just realized that now he accidentally sold it. Had he kept it or done nothing? Had he done nothing over the years, he'll be up 50% because he bought in a 30 something. It's like 35,000 or something like that. And then now it's 40, 42, 43. Um, he'll be up over 50, 60%. But instead, you know, what he didn't do was HODL or nor DCA, but HODL is the most important. He, he panic sold, right? And I feel like that's what happens to most retail investors in every cycle. When we go through something like this, a 35% drop, let's say they're like, I'm out. You know, this is not for me because they don't understand when it comes to Bitcoin. It's just really a matter of holding and DCA. That's it. There's no strategy. You don't have to try to outsmart the market. Sometimes you could. But majority of the cases, ha had you just held, that's it, just held, you would be making more. So that's really it. And as for this cycle, a lot of people love to compare Bitcoin to gold, especially after the ETF event. Uh, when you look at gold like that, it looks like it was immediate. Like after the ETF, immediately it just starts going up. No. That's actually not what happened. After gold got its ETF, it took a long time before it started going parabolic. Because for 100 years before, it was just like basically stagnant. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the thing. Like we had the ETF. We didn't immediately shoot up to the moon. But over time, as more and more money come in, that's what's going to happen. When the trillions start flowing in and everyone wants a piece of Bitcoin, that's exactly what's going to happen. Bitcoin's going to be driven up to the moon. And I'm not even sure we're going to have the same kind of crypto winter going forward. I really don't. We could have exactly the same kind of crypto winter. So at the end of 2025, the bubble bursts and we go back down 70 or 80%. Or this time around, there is just no bubble. We just keep on going. We could maybe correct a little bit like that 20 or 30% I showed you. And then we just keep on going. We could be in a super cycle forever now.
because of ETFs. It's a little early to tell, but we'll see. I just have a hard time believing once the trillions flow in that they're just all going to disappear at the end of 2025. You know, retail investors did that before, but now with the big boys, with all that money coming in, I just don't feel like they're going to treat Bitcoin the same way. They're going to treat it as a long-term investment, right? So it'll be interesting. 2024 is still, I think it's going to be a fantastic year. 2025 will be even better. All right, with that said, outside of Bitcoin, uh, what else is going on? Well, the alts did come down. Some, some, but you still have a lot of alts that are holding well. Here's the reason, because Bitcoin dominance, okay, did not go up. You would figure, again, this is why this cycle is very different than previous cycles. The alts are a lot, a lot stronger than people give them credit for. Bitcoin dominance did not go up. In fact, Bitcoin dominance has been going down. It's at 50.1%. It might actually drop below 50%. Just recently, it was as high as like 53, 54%. To, to take 1% away from Bitcoin dominance is actually pretty hard to do. Okay, pretty hard to do. And here's another thing too. Today, I was just going to look at like all the like sold off all coins, right? To take advantage of like the things that are down like majorly. And I sorted by seven days, like right here on CMC. I sorted by seven days. I mean, <laughs> there are still enormous amount on just the first page alone that's still in the green for the last seven days. That's taking into account the last two days, I guess last day of selling off, right? But okay, let's sort it by the red because I would figure, you know, it, like we'll see like double digit losses for everything for the last seven days. No, that's not the case at all you have clayton which i don't know much of but i've heard that they're not doing any very well i don't talk about them they are down majorly in the last seven days but you got a kosh that's down 11 percent. but you know that's not that bad considering prior to this last week they're up 40 percent. so it kind of makes sense uh thor chain has become weak for a, a bit but Looking at it, people have asked me about Oasis. They have been really strong and hot. They're down 7% for the week, but again, up 41% for the month. Not bad. Beam, I think it's a good candidate. Down 6%, down 25% over the last 30 days. They started, They no, yeah, like toward the end of 2023, they got really hot. So they're taking a breather, but I think Beam with all the games that they're onboarding and they have this big fun program, they... They are a good pickup. Like Solana, you know, they're only down 4% for the week. I, I still love Solana. I got some stuff to say about Solana. But, you know, going down a list, again, were we reset back months ago, six months ago? No. So even with yesterday's drop, alts are still very strong. Like some of my favorites, Injective and Near here, okay? Up 50% for the for last 30 days. Injective up 14%. They're only down 3% for the week. And everything else is it's it's either like near zero or in the green. So again, if you're feeling like ah, uh, we got reset back, you know, like we got really killed the last few days. No, we, we really didn't. We got reset back like a week. That that's really it, right? But like I said, anytime we have a pullback. This is why you need to have cash on the side. Anytime we have a pullback, it gives you another opportunity to buy things low. It's like you got in a time machine and you went back in time. And now you can buy things, your favorite alt and Bitcoin at a lower price. That's really what it comes down to, right? Uh, speaking of some of these other uh, plays, I did see a couple things. Number one, Hedera. A lot of people always ask me about Hedera. Like, oh, why don't you talk about Hedera, right? I'm waiting to hear more. So, for example, this. They have approved $408 million for the HBAR for ecosystem growth, right? That's an enormous amount, close to half a billion dollars. So, what does that mean? Well, that means they're going to be spending an enormous amount of money attracting dApps, okay? That's what we want to see. I know Karate Combat, they're doing very well. Recently, they actually come up a lot, doing very well for Hedera. And, and I know there's several other dApps on there, but it's just not that well known, right? If they can draw in some really good dApps or games, 
I mean, that's go help them tremendously, mm -hmm. right? So that's a pretty big news. And also they have partnered up with Algorand too, just a few days mm -hmm. ago. They have a new alliance, an open source protocol to troubleshoot a need for decentralized recovery for digital assets, which is actually very important because as much as people want self-custody, a lot of people also want some kind of recovery system because a lot of people after they die or they lose their recovery phrase, that's it. There's no way to recover, right? So a better system needs to be developed. And the current systems that have like a recovery system, a lot of people have a problem with, okay? Like, like Ledger has a recovery system that people don't like. Basically the keys divide into three ways. As long as you have two out of three keys, you can get access to it. Um, and there's some other wallet also that, that has that kind of system. But if we have a better system that's still decentralized, you know, I think the entire market can, can benefit from that, right? Uh, that's one of the things, unfortunately about self-custody is just that it's very, like you have to, you know, it's not the device itself, it's really the recovery phrase, it's the access to the private key. If you ever lose that, you're just done. You just can't, there's no way to recover that, right? So, uh, but we'll see. So this is good for Algorand, good for Dara. They're, they're making some moves. So we'll see. They're like mid-cap all L1s that are all, they're both doing pretty well. Uh, what else is there? I saw uh, Sheeb. Sheeb has been very, very boring recently. But they reveal that this year, they're going to do a big marketing push. Shibarium, which is a layer two. Uh, they have decent amount of volume, but you just don't see Sheeb do much these days. It's not really moving, but they're trying to change that. They're going to do a big marketing push to draw in more dApps or maybe more meme coins into Shibarium, right? That's the surprising thing. You would figure Shibarium is a layer two that started with a meme, right? You would have a lot more memes on Shibarium. I just don't, you just don't really hear it, right? You just... Just don't. So we'll see. We'll see. But speaking of memes, uh, you know, the memes on Solana are still getting hot. Bonk, of course, is number three. You got Whiff, which is at number, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. And now you have Myro that's skyrocketing and it's at number eight. So memes on, sh on Solana are getting hot and hot and hot and more hot. And yeah, Myro is up 41% for the day at 150 million market cap. So memes, they're people drivers. Right now, it seems like most of them are in red. But when the market turns, they all turn in green and they skyrocket in a big way. All right. That's pretty much it. Let's do some, some Q&A. Yeah, I, th I think the reason why Sheeb has not been going up and why people say, well, Shibarium is dead, I'm seeing in the chat, is because the rise of other memes. I mean, Sheeb is so big already. And, you know, I've always made this argument. Well, they're up a little bit today, so that's good. I always make this argument is like, you know, mm -hmm. once you build all this utility into a meme, does that just take the memeness out, right? Do people really just want to stay the project stay meme-ish or actually build utility, right? There's always this, I don't know, you know, there's always this thing, right? Um, so I don't know which one will actually win out. All right, let me scroll up. That dude is too emotional. I think you're talking about Dave Porn right here. Um, let's see. 
BDC, Daniel says, BDC is volatile. Volatile runs counter to retirement philosophy of Vanguard. That makes sense, except why does Vanguard hold significant amount of shares in all the Bitcoin-related companies? That's a little weird. Um... Where have you been? Saucer swap on Hedera is killing it. Is it though? Is it though? Because Hedera's TVL is still quite low. Where's Hedera's? Where, where, where is Hedera here? Hedera's TVL is at 72 million. So obviously they don't have a large DeFi offering, nor do a lot of people utilize their DeFi. So you say saucer swap is killing it i mean with 68 million tvl they're not really killing it and and according to DeFi llama there's only seven DeFi dApps on here so yeah i'm rooting for hadera i've been neutral on them for a while i hope they do well but right now as a chain they're just there's not a lot going on Kevin says, I think ETH is old technology. Solana is new. I mean, a lot of people feel that way. We'll see. ETH may be getting a boost because of the ETF hype. I've talked about it so many times this past week. right? We'll see if that holds true. Obviously, up 14% in the last seven days, so that's good. If they get that hype, great. right? We've seen a lot of dApps on top of Ethereum doing well recently. So if they get that back, great. But ultimately, I do think someone like Solana is going to overtake them because they just, they're just better. Myro to $10 when they get listed on Coinbase or Binance? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if they're going to go up that. I mean, they're $150 million market cap. Can they get to a billion after a Coinbase or Binance listing? Sure. Coinbase could list them. I mean, Coinbase loves Solana-based tokens, so... That's what happened to Bonk. Um, so can that happen? I don't know. They have to do like a 10x. No, 8x to get a billion. 7x? 7x to get a billion. So I don't know if they're going to get to $10. Seven x would just be like a dollar. Uh, I just got done talking about Hedera. Uh, Clay says, you like Ferrari, I assume. Can you look into Ferrari? It's driving cat meme. No, no thanks. That's not even, that's not even clever. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, I don't even like that name. What do you think about Midas? New dApps coming out. I think Midas, I, I've covered Midas one time before. Um, if I know how to spell them. They're doing really relatively well. A smaller L2, of, of course. Uh, Vitalik's mom is involved. Um, they have potential. They have potential. I forgot the, the 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 main differentiator besides Vitalik's mom being there. There was something that they did that I really liked. Um, I forgot. I forgot what it was. Yeah, but, you know, they could do well, especially with the new improvement protocol coming to Ethereum. It's going to help all the L2s like Midas to become cheaper and faster. So, pretty good. I think it's development fund. I think that's what I, I remember. I think they have a large development fund. It was like a hundred something million. Uh, yeah, 4.6 million Midas. So, whatever that comes out to be. Yeah, it's, it's a significant amount. They could do well. Telos, you know, it's funny. I just got done talking to someone that was a founder of Telos. Um, 
Yeah, I, I'm not so sure Talos is going to do well. It's still based on EOS. So, and there's so many L1, L2s now. Telos is a, they're basically an L2, L1, L2. They're an EVM compatible chain built with a EOS key, um, code base. I don't think they're going to do well this cycle. All the L2s will, I think, will steal their thunder. And, and obviously, they have not been moving. So many coins to choose from. Any suggestion narrowed down? Well, you know, I tried to do that during the stream, you know. You could sort by last seven days, look at all the ones that are majorly down, or maybe you could sort by last 30 days and look at the ones that's down and pick the ones that you like. Like for me, I think there are a few that's interesting, but a vast majority of alts did not drop that much, at least the ones I like. So I think that's the way to do it. When you DCA, you buy low and you sell high, right? Look at the ones that have sold off the most, the ones that you hold and you want to DCA into and do that. But like honestly, we didn't we didn't reset that all that much. In fact, Bitcoin dominance just went down even more. When it was just at fifty point one percent, now it's fifty percent. Uh, Deputy Dog, thoughts on Cronus platform and potential? Not for me. I've never liked Cronos. Never like Kronos. Kate asking, am I bullish on mint layer? I, I, let's just say I'm not bullish, but I am intrigued by them. So they, they definitely help Bitcoin, right? And I think they're layer two for Bitcoin to help Bitcoin. <laughs> I mean, to help new standards come out, right? Mm -hmm. um, rather than use BRC20, which they say clogs up Bitcoin's network to come out new tokens on top of Bitcoin using min layer. So I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting. I don't know if it's going to be widely adopted because BRC20 is getting so hot, but it could. Do I only Rolexes? Yes. A couple of them. Uh, both Daytonas. No. Yeah. No, one is a day just, one is a uh, Daytona. Um, over over last three, this is according to Mike. Over last three halvings, Bitcoin bottoms, but before the next halving, we reach a new local high, and that is followed by a 30 60 percent drop before going on to reach the cycle's all time high. We have just hit this local high. Um, okay, I don't agree or disagree because I can't verify what you're saying but I look at this when the bull market gets going do you see Filecoin going back to previous high it's a 31x. Oof. Oof. Filecoin is so big already. To do a 31x, man, I don't know. I don't know. It, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to say I don't know. I'm not a big fan of Filecoin, but I do recognize in bull runs, most, most go back at least to their previous high. At least. So, but 31x, that's going to be tough. Ace Crypto, no, I have not. As I mentioned Chainlink today, no. What's going on with Chainlink? Is it doing well today? No. What's going on with Chainlink? I didn't catch any Chainlink news.
if you would have to add a new coin to your portfolio with this dip, which one would it be? I mean, you watch my DCA portfolio updates. I've added a lot over the over the the course of the last year. So I, I can't there's not another one I really want to add at this point. Do you think SEC will really approve e Ethereum ETF soon? I, I don't think it's that soon. I think there's a chance maybe by the end of this year, but I don't know. I think I think Gary still doesn't want to recognize that ETH is a commodity, so that may hold things back. Uh, Johnny Five, during market turn down, one in doubt, zoom out, and mantra live by. How do you handle inexplicable market movements like now? Makes no sense. Actually, it, it it does because I just found it. I think this is the reason why. The miner sold about one billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. You would think that the miners would not be doing that. They're hoarding as much as possible. But if you think about it, the miners been holding throughout crypto winter, not selling anything. And now they know that they know the having events right around the corner and they need to double their processing power to keep operations going the same way as before. So I think they're just taking advantage to sell off right now and using that to buy equipment to prepare for the next three months, right? I think that's really it. But again, keep things into perspective. We reset back a week, okay? I see some like bearish people in this chat, which I don't quite understand. We didn't fall back to like 35,000. We didn't fall back to like 30,000. We fell back to a level that we, we saw three, you know, a, a week ago. So obviously, if you have a billion dollars being dumped on exchanges, it's going to cause it to go down a little bit. And obviously, when these big boys are buying OTC, people are like, well, they're OTC. They never go move the market. Well, that, if that's the case, then Bitcoin will never move. No, it does, because there's only a set supply. There's an infinite amount of alts out there. But for Bitcoin, there's a set supply. And the OTC market will dry up. It's not going to be there forever. I read to calculate. Coinbase has about $44 billion of the Bitcoin. They sold $7 billion of it recently. So there's only so much that they could sell before they're like, we don't have any more. Randy Robson says, what do you mean when you say alpha? The latest info, basically. That's it. It's a new slang term. I guess I don't even know if it's a slang term that people say in terms of getting the latest and best info. Yeah, MPL. I'm in your per personal portfolio. Basically, what I DCA is like mimicking my personal portfolio in a very similarly. But me, me, I have been adding more like memes. I added a Miro recently, and it's been doing well. Uh, troll on ETH meme is pumping hard any views. I, I just think all the memes that are hot are on Solana. I don't pay attention to ETH memes anymore. That might change with ETH getting hotter because of, because of the ETF hype. But I just don't pay attention to ETH memes anymore. Can you check out Troll? It's a meme token that's hot right now. Let's not. <laughs> Let's not. Let's not check it out. And anyways, in terms of memes, there's really nothing to check out. It's either it's pumping or it's dumping. There's, there's nothing else to check out when it comes to memes.
Donnie says, you got to be bearish once in a while. You've been in crypto long enough to know that. Why? I don't get why you need to be bearish. You explain to me why you need to be bearish. I focus on the future. And it sucks if things go down. If today Bitcoin crashed at 30,000, I like think, yeah, that sucks. That really sucks. Like, why did it go down to 30,000? And I lost a lot of unrealized gains, right? But that would not make me bearish about Bitcoin. Like, I don't get that stand. Why would you be bearish? You understand what Bitcoin is about. You know that it's gonna go up in the long run. Like, why would you be bearish? That's just not me. I'm not a trader. Every time I trade, I fail. Just like Dave Portnoy. Every time I try to trade, I fail. So I stop trying. I just hold in DCA. That's it. <laughs> Dylan says, man, I got catfished on a date. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. If you want to, if you want to take profit, that's fine. That's not being bearish. That's different. It, I even say you need to have 20, 25% in cash, right? That there's nothing wrong about selling to sell, to take profits, to lock in gains and have that cash so that you can continue forward. That's not being bearish. That's just being smart. But when people say, well, why are you not bearish? Like, why would you be bearish? Like, if you know and understand what you're investing in and you believe in it, why would you be bearish? The price movement has nothing to do with being bearish or not. There's a difference there. And if you want to cash out and take profits, that's smart. That's not being bearish. Tony says, you're allowed to be bearish on Well, yeah, XRP, I'll make an exception. You could be bearish on XRP. Scott, you're the only one that recognizes what you love in this. <laughs> uh, Lubomir says, being bearish is like having depression. Yeah, it's like saying someone needs to have depression in their life. Yeah, you don't. You could be, you could be down in your life, but still be very hopeful and happy and content with your life, right? It's the same thing with being bullish on Bitcoin. You always conveniently say it's okay to take profits after too late. When is it too late? See, like, I, I, I don't know how to convince guys like, oh, yeah, sure. Because they just don't listen. <laughs> is it too late to take profit right now because Bitcoin is at 43000 It sounds like you don't have enough or it sounds like you sold way too early. Like you think 43,000 is, is time to be bearish. Uh, engine or injective, I should say injective peak market cap. Um, Ooh, injective is uh, three billion. They're already above their previous high. So it's really hard to give a projection on injective because again, they're way higher than 2021 high. Um, but can they, I mean, can they do a 10 X 15 X? Yeah. Yeah, they can. AWT gaming project. Abyss world. Very, very, very small. I'm going to leave this until it gets bigger.
What is the 50, 25, 25 rule? It's quite simple. 50% Bitcoin, 25% in big caps, anything over 8 billion in market cap. And then 25% on anything else. Mid caps, small caps, micro caps, whatever you want. 50% in that stability. 25% in you know, stability and growth. That's the big caps. And 25% in, in hyper growth stuff, right? But they're very volatile. They could drop. But it's okay if you have 75% in Bitcoin and big caps. So that's the 50, 25, 25 rule. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Overall, we had a little dip, a little dip that reset us back a week. Don't be discouraged. Definitely don't be discouraged. Think of it as getting in a time machine, going back a week, and starting over, right? We have this every single cycle, especially during the bull markets. We have huge catastrophic drops. And people will say it's over. People get depressed. People leave, right? Mm -hmm. But those that stay in the longest win the most. Holdall and DCA, that's really it. There's really no other explanation you need. Holdall and DCA for gains. That's it. All right, guys. Smash it a like, subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys tomorrow. Oh, by the way, big new video on CryptoZaros Plus from Noah that's coming out. Uh, right at 12 o'clock. So that's a little bit like 20 minutes from now. Make sure you go to CryptoZaros Plus. Check out this other video that's coming out, Chart Storm. And also I'm going to do my Sunday walk video tomorrow in, on CRU Plus. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. The link is in the description. And, then, uh, and I'll see you guys on Monday, 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. All right, have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.